Yeah. This is such good stuff. I want to go back to um, the forgiveness. Uh, when you started sharing your last experience uh, with forgive, you know, that, that we're um, during life review, one thing that we um, we really need to work on is forgiveness, right? I mean, even then the law of one, I don't know if you know about the law of one studies. I love the, the quote that in forgiveness lies the stoppage of the wheel of karma. So I wanted to uh, share what I learned about that during my, <laughs> I didn't even know I was going through my life review, but what Yeshua taught me, he's like, here you go, this is it. So I must've been going through it and, you know, in, time in my meditations and in increments that way um here kind of thing because uh, it's just so mind-boggling when we think about or try to think about the difference between here and there when there is no difference so <laughs> right there is no difference it's just frequency but during my meditations he he was telling me he would give me Sometimes they give me instructions for my meditations. And one of them was to imagine um, my, my family member that, um, that hurt me on a constant basis when I was a child and tell him that I forgive him. Okay, just say it. Just say it. He said, you don't have to feel it. Just mouth it. Just say it, whatever it is. And I didn't really feel any anger toward him or anything like that because it was so long ago. But, um, but just to, just to try it kind of thing. And I probably worked on that. I don't know, three weeks, some, probably something like that is what comes to mind. And I'm, uh, you know, just doing my thing. Okay. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you kind of, you know, that type of thing. And I'm just not really feeling it. And then one day it hit me, all this information flooded into my mind myself that he and I had chosen and this was right oh uh light bulb at, right after I remembered this is when I had that life thing of seeing all those lives because I got it I got I got it um he and I even though we weren't close in this lifetime I hardly ever saw him in my conscious memory uh, he and I were very close on the other side and he chose to um, come to this a lifetime with me many 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 years ago centuries ago and um, and uh, create an experience where he killed me and uh, and I remember that experience as I'm looking at this remember the experience where he killed me and my mother and um, and that I needed to retrieve that lifetime so but unfortunately what happened was I got stuck way back when in that, that trauma and wasn't able to bring, to integrate it. So he chose, he chose to come back in other lifetimes and be a really mean, cruel person. Whereas um, we chose together, he, he chose with me. We made that agreement together. I, I saw that I got the better end of the stick because, you know, I wasn't like him. Okay. So he chose to, to do that with me, not to me, with me so that I could finally for once and for all, bring that experience into the whole and, and forgive it and, you know, integrate that. And I realized he has so much unconditional love for me that he chose to do that. So I was able to break that contract with him and we could both move on. He can move on, raise his frequency and move on his soul journey. And I can move on. I don't have to keep doing that. I don't have to keep choosing that experience with him because it was a very deep rooted and um, traumatic and profound experience for me. That was huge for me. And so I was able to forgive. And then I realized there's nothing to forgive. I asked him, we agreed. Also, because also uh, seems like you you figured out what it was for, what right. you got out of it, what the value of that experience is. That's how I worded right. it on, on my thing that okay. there was value to it, and you got the value. 
Mm -hmm. because you, you now from this perspective you are able to see it and get the value right of it's, having that experience in the yes. same time and that's where that integration comes in because if it's not integrated we can't we don't remember it we can't we don't have that we don't understand the value right right if you're still resistant to the experience itself and and, and you can't even look at it yeah then you're not being able to pull out the value of it that that it had to happen because this value was there for that reason it was the definitely cause and effect but this good value from it otherwise he wouldn't have needed to volunteer to come back and play out that role again right right yeah yeah, yeah that was amazing and then all those um after that is when not long after that is when all that uh those lifetimes <laughs> just uh, all that from source to all the way back it's crazy 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 <laughs> i'm watching uh you're talking about sci-fi shows i'm i'm catching up on star trek series uh series that i didn't watch before there's a lot of time travel in those and a lot of parallel you know uh, time travel paradoxes uh temporal wars and and uh parallel realities and stuff like that it's just like oh when i watch it you know i my dreams are really affected normally <laughs> i'm like okay i need to do something else before i go to sleep but um yeah i love that those mind twisters too i do i do want to share one little thing um where i was seeing parallel realities at those at where our decisions and that that's what that movie was about that i saw last night uh, i saw where my ex um, boyfriend at the time and i had a really bad fight and we were drinking we were partying i used to be a partier and we were drinking and partying we had a really bad fight and i saw a reality split off from that i saw it and i saw where um i became drug addicted became um uh, it was it was just a bad one and <laughs> it was a bad one and it was a violent relationship that we continued on in that reality we never got out of the pain of of what we were dealing with at that time in this reality i you know i ended the relationship and and got out of it but um i, I actually saw that she was he ended up murdering her in that reality i saw that reality which was wow ooh yeah so, I so that was a there. like a, a branch that happened it was a branch and mm -hmm. you wow that's pretty pretty profound to be able to witness that yeah it was really sad for me it definitely was sad but i had to help my guidance was helping me heal that part of me and bringing that bringing that reality in and uh, not let that be lost out there somewhere. this reality until so that yes yeah so being able to witness that out there helped you to change it in here right isn't that cool yeah <laughs> so parallel realities is something that um i we could probably talk about for a long time because <laughs> like you said yeah. every moment we're creating a new reality aren't we yeah we are yeah um you were uh let me see here you were talking about becoming and you may have shared this in your last in our last talk but i love i love how you described it in the book becoming one with the planet i wonder if you could voice that that again because it's just so beautiful it really is i love it okay yeah <laughs> um Part of my experience was, uh, so I had, um, the love came, touched me, and I, I went into the beam of white. I became one with the beam of white, and uh, I w went up the beam, and as I went up the beam, I I, my view of the earth went down and uh i got to like the now i heard this 
just the other day called the noosphere, but it's like the ionosphere. But it was like when I hit that, I I did like access a bunch of knowledge. I did feel like infinite love at that point, but it was I was still just the the I, tip of the iceberg of the uh, the love that I did eventually. But I did feel like um, the Earth is a being that that and I became the being of the earth I, sort of like the earth is my body now <laughs> i am mother earth that i became one with mother earth anyway now i'm feel like i'm very separate from earth but but it is you can kind of feel it a little bit just sitting in nature mm-hmm. and when you really like um have a living plant, even if it's just a living little plant in your presence with a little bit of dirt. You, if you, you know, gaze at that plant, you can feel it. I, I can feel it, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I, I can feel that connection every time I sit in the garden, in the backyard, or even I'm in my room and I just look out the window and I see the trees and the wind and the, the, the clouds. It's all that, that vibrancy of life force that if you let yourself, you can attune to it and feel it again. Yeah. And it feels like, and again, it feels uh, like a memory mm-hmm. because it is, already within us already part of who we are yeah that's beautiful and i if i remember correctly because i i had a similar experience where i was i went during my near-death experience which i didn't put two and two together until recently when yeshua was taking me to a water planet where i was also i had the perspective of being the body of the planet and i could move my perspective all and I felt so much unconditional love, so much love for all the beings on the planet, everything on my body <laughs> as the being, and I could move my perspective back, or, or from you know from the whole of the bl- planet down to uh, a single cell, I guess, as I um, was focusing on that reality and being, and and so. I agree. It was a, it was a memory. It was remembering this. And I think you described about how you had so much, um, you had connection with the being, with all the, all of us, the whole entire universe. Wait, that's another one. Um, that's next. Okay. <laughs> but you, um, <laughs> yeah. you had, um, you were one with all the souls on the planet too, right? Yes. I, I, I feel like I, I felt the population. Like, okay. So there's like how many? I don't know. Seven billion, billion or What's seven, it? seven and a half billion or something. Uh, is it fourteen billion on the oh, planet? All right. No, there's I don't there's know. seven and a half billion, I believe. Maybe it's fourteen billion years. Okay, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it it but it was like all the currently living be- souls. But also a connection to the past souls and the future souls as well. But um, most presently, the okay. present souls. But okay. I did feel like uh, that the, the physical people, but um, for me in that moment it was the spirits in the physical people <laughs> that i was connecting with okay it, more than the physical people but i don't know that's just the some nuance of it so that experience connecting to the spirit of the physical people meaning if i understand um the all of what they bring in, in all the frequencies that would make up a physical being or a physical expression. Does that make sense? Well, like 
the the the, the physical being in or the soul is in inside or inhabiting or anchored to the physical. The physical is um like holding space okay for the yeah. soul to be there and the anyway yeah there, there it is not so so dismissive as as the vehicle because the physical has divinity within itself as well mm. so i i understand that analogy to call it a vessel or a vehicle or something that but but it, it deserves a little higher elevation than something that normally is dismissed as just matter mm -hmm. because there is no just matter of anything <laughs> but right. but yes it is it is holding space for respectfully holding space for the spirit and anchoring the spirit into physicality and and that is a huge you know stewardship honor honorable position <laughs> yeah i love that that um that reminds me of a video i saw yesterday i guess it was or day before a little um about the shroud of turin and the a scientist or he's a an, an engineer actually who did tests on 20 years of testing on the shroud of turin he thought it was a fake. He said, oh, I read a newspaper article that said it was a fake of carbon testing, that kind of thing. And his mother asked him, well, uh, since you're an engineer, why don't you test, you know, see, get some information on the shroud chart and see if you can see what it is. He says, well, it's a fake. And, <laughs> and she goes, well, how do you know that? He said, well, I read it in a news article. She says, that's how you get your research from a news article. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> our newspaper article? And he goes, well, I guess not. So he dedicated 20 years up to now with, um, uh, actually was with the Shroud Turin and testing and testing, testing, testing. Anyway, he's coming to the conclusions that it's definitely real, that it does not, it is not a fake. Definitely real. It has the imprint of Jesus Yeshua on it. Uh, anyway, so what, what you were talking about uh, made me think of that because he was talking about how the cloth, the, sh the shroud, um, as it, as, as, his body decomposed, I guess you could say, or I don't know if he was even decomposing, but it was taking on more light, transforming, transforming. The shroud would move throughout the body, and that's what uh, created the imprint on the shroud. Uh, I don't, I can't explain it the way he did. It was just so fascinating, and I could actually see it in my mind's eye as as the light was imprinting on the shroud from from his from his um what did you call it his uh transmutation yeah but you you were saying that it's not really a vehicle it's um that our bodies oh. they're not really vehicles what did you call them call it again it made me think of that uh i said holding space holding anchoring space. yes because he was so filled with light and as as he his physical body um died i guess you could say or the you know quit his heart stopped he said that it was a heart attack and he started describing some things that i, I couldn't listen to it but um it was what that shroud told him testing it what how he was totally um tortured um but it just I've, it made me think of that for some reason i have to send me the link on that. I am a huge fan of the Shroud of Turin research. I went to the school, my school, photography school that I went to is where they took it to get it photographed in uh, Santa Barbara. I uh -huh. went to that school, that was for my school, but um, I had an experience, uh, actually had a fever. Uh, the, it, it was before my transcendent experience and I didn't put it in the book, but uh, I had a, uh, like, whatever, the flu, and I had a fever of 103 or four or something, so I was, it was the January 1st, 2001, so it's 
like several months before my life experience and I had an epiphany of how the Shroud of Turin happened and um in my experience where my body was like illuminated from the inside and yeah. it was bluish white and I'm like maybe that's part of it <laughs> but um in my epiphany that I had from my feverish state I had this um understanding of light because when I went to photography school the, they teach you how to understand light anyway um so I thought of it like uh he's in there for three days and so the at least two days two days of sunlight there's let's say there's a crack of light uh beaming into this dark space and that light like touches it goes through the cloth and reflects off the body and then it um gets the light gets to the cloth and then um so it's like a fax or a, a computer a scan where because the light is just like if it's just peeking through one little dot then it goes over the whole body mm -hmm. and then um that could potentially create um some you know more directed light onto the cloth and like if the cloth was impregnated with enough silver which is highly potential because the cloth was already a well cared for um uh quality cloth it might have been kept in a silver container for their special occasion that they were gonna pull it out for and then after um then after it was exposed to the divine light of jesus whether it was sunlight reflecting or whether it was an emanation from jesus himself um then it was put into a silver box and anything that was activated gets developed like a photograph because that's what silver does so essentially the age tarnishes it and that's why they couldn't see the image at first but it developed over time and then also why it's starting to fade now because the rest of the silver is getting activated anyway so like hell as a whole <laughs> <laughs> like scientific or uh -huh. pseudo-scientific uh, wow. ideas on how it happened but I, I didn't, I didn't write any big thing about it. But then, uh, I did have a, a another uh, Jesus experience regarding the shroud. Is I, I took the image of the shroud, um, photograph or in the, my computer and digitally uh, retouched it uh, to change. Like I that was like, why is the hair white? needs if, if it's you know let's see what it looks like if it's brown and i would like color replace the certain like spots and um it made these um hasidic curls like showed up really well on both both sides of the shroud mm -hmm. and um anyway with i i have that on my website it's uh oh my my digital retouching of the shroud to make it look like jesus but um i definitely felt his presence as i was working on that and then um there was one weird thing that happened like real quick no, it was share away <laughs> <laughs> so as i was working on the digital retouching i i left the blood i like because there's blood on the um that curl the, the the forehead and i left it looking like blood but i would feel him saying like you know let's not remember the blood part all right we don't need to get gory about it let's just you know <laughs> clean it up a little and so i tried to print it with the blood on there and it wouldn't print <laughs> i couldn't mm. get it to print mm. and so i like all right i'll take the blood out and then it printed really easily <laughs> because i was like well funny. it's dramatic yeah. to have the blood in there but anyway right. take the blood out take the blood but out. yeah that yeah. you can see how the like if you have curly hair and you, it's blood soaked then it's that's 
kind of like the the ringlet of curl mm -hmm. on the forehead of the shroud mm -hmm. anyway yeah but yeah there's so yeah. many questions about it i just like time go deep on that <laughs> it's I'll, really I'll definitely cool. send you that link or actually i can i can look up and tell the audience or put the link down there but it's um in the details it uh there's a uh, 17 minute um you know synopsis uh just a clip of the the whole total video is two and a half hours long but um there's a um i haven't gotten through the whole two and a half hour or two hours i think it is but okay uh, just put it in the link put it in the yeah. link it'll be great you don't okay. have to worry about it jack zacco is his name uh, but it's it's fascinating and um okay w was i talking without you hearing me was I on mute? No. Oh, you could hear me? Okay, because I thought my mute yeah. was on. Okay. <laughs> I have a button I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to, I have a, a Shroud Turin experience I want to share real quick too. Um, I don't know if I shared with you when I was going through my quickening after my uh, near-death experience and going through all this stuff that just, whoa, I ended up in the psych ward for a week. Oh yeah, yeah. Mentioned. Okay, yeah. I think you mentioned it off camera. Did I? Okay. Well, I mentioned it enough times on camera where I don't care anymore. But um, and and Yeshua called it the temple on the hill because I realized the people that were there who had broken through this reality <laughs> were actually the sane ones, and we were communicating on a much higher level. Uh, other than what we were when whenever we talked to each other with the other patients there whenever we talked to each other we i was getting the communications that were at a different level um so anyway as i was there uh, it like i said before it's kind of a vacation i, I suggest everyone spend a week in the cycle <laughs> it was like a you know the not the really heavy duty ones but it was like a vacation it was in a, a hospital um so they have us you know they give us art supplies and stuff like that so i would, i spent a lot of time with art and journaling a lot of that and um so i drew had this big sheet and was just drawing up i felt the need to draw vortexes and in portals and things like that that type of um images and I put, and I, there was one in particular that I put on my desk in my room. I had, you know, they give you a little table desk kind of thing. And for about two or three days, whenever I would walk into my room and come close to it, and he mentions this in, in his interview that when you're standing about six feet away from the shroud, you can't see the image, but you can see it once you're standing over it. Um, it's like a holographic thing. Uh, I could see. When I moved closer to, as I was walking by at one point, I saw, I could see the shroud turn image, his face from the shoulders up on that, that sheet of paper that I was drawing and, and creating art, whatever kind of art it was. I didn't draw that, <laughs> not consciously anyway. I could see that just as clear as day, just like the shroud turn. Yeah, it was cool. Wow. So you didn't trace it or draw it. You just saw it there. I just saw it there. I saw it with my, oh. you know, my three eyes were working that. together. <laughs> so it was, was it like a statement of say Joshua was validating the shroud for you? Um, I think it was more validating that he was there with me. Yeah. Because yeah. I, you know, I was in that space of they wanted to give me drugs and everything like that, and I didn't want to take them. And so I, because I was afraid of losing my connection, and him telling me that uh, you're not, this is never going to, you can't you, lose you that can't. connection. You can't, yeah, Whew, yeah. So, um, yeah, he was there validating. I, I believe that's what that's what I got from it. <laughs> and he yeah, used that shroud. Beautiful. He used that shroud image which could be also validation that it was real, that it was him. Yeah, and to say, I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. I heard his voice. 
I was a different time. I was just, um, I was having a, it was after the fact and I was just feeling very alone and bereft and that having a dark moment. And I just decided to sit down and not do anything. And then I felt his presence and I heard his voice right next to me, the side say, I am with you always. Oh. And it just felt so comforting. And then, so now I, I know it, but it's really nice to remind yourself. Uh, really nice to get those reminders. It's totally. beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we've gone an hour and what, 40 minutes or so. I wanted um, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick and we could, I could split these videos up and um, if you don't, if you have a couple more minutes. I, I, I'm here for you. Let's okay. do it. Let's keep going. And then you can definitely split okay. them up into little okay. pieces sure. and let it play out. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, you had talked about um, hearing angels, that angelic choir right in your book because i don't want to share a, a bunch of your book without letting people read it so you know right people need to read it but i love the part about the angelic choirs um uh because it validated what i was getting because i have uh angelic voices on 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 recordings when i do communications with spirits so um if you could share what what someone told you about the angelic voices and then i'll share what i got yeah so this happened during an uh, obe so like after the effect and i i met um al taylor in the uh, learning light foundation in orange county california and i took his class and he taught me how to do the um interruption of sleep technique so um Anyway, it, had, it even it was years after I wasn't even hanging out at uh, the Learning Light anymore that I had this experience where I got out of my body and I was flying around Hollywood and um, I ended up at the Kodak Theater, which it's not called the Kodak Theater anymore. I forget what it's called. And um but it's that mall that's right by the Hollywood sign. And you can look, you can go to the balcony and look out and see the Hollywood sign. Anyway, in, there was some more before that, but uh, in the dream, I'm there with my guide, who I think is him, him uh, guiding me. And, and uh, there were these uh, escalators up to the next third level but the, in reality there is no third level it just uh this was the etheric escalator and he's like oh no i'm not going up there and i'm like all right i'm going though i want to see what's up there so i go up this escalator and um as i'm going up the escalator i hear um angels singing and lovely music uh vocalizations and um Actually, uh, a side note, I did find a sound that sounded like it, and I posted it on my YouTube page, so go over there and listen to it, and anyway, but it's not exact, but it's as close as I could find, and um, anyway, so I'm hearing these lovely sounds, and I, I thought, well, let me try to join the chorus and sing along, and I start doing the you know, falsetto. I'm not going to try it right now because I don't sound anything like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did then, I'm sure. I did then. Yes, I'm trying it out, whatever. And um, anyway, so the angel comes over to me humorously but lovingly and says, you know, we're, we're, we're not just singing. We're not singing. We're talking to each other. This is how we communicate with each other. <laughs> and that it was like, you're not doing, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> but, but lovingly. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And that's, I love that. And, and the reason I wanted you to share that is because I do spirit box communications, talking to spirit, that type of thing. And there's many, many, many times where I'll hear what sounds like an angelic choir. And that's what I call it because it sounds like an angelic choir. I mean, that's what we, how we know it. And when I work with my recordings, what I'll do is I'll slow it down, slow down because a lot of them are so fast that, you know, um, I can't understand them. So I'll slow. So I've slowed down these angelic uh, recordings, angelic choir, and I hear them actually talking. (laughs) Oh, really? Yes. I would love to hear that. Oh, okay. I'll share some. Point me in the direction. Okay. I will. I mean, I don't have them posted anywhere, but, um, but yeah, I'll share. Um, I'll share some uh, with you, but yeah, or it's maybe cool. I can that's cool that you're doing the EVPs too. I think that's part of the um, one of the things Al Taylor had his ghost ghost hunting group, and we mm. took our digital recorders and trying to catch the e- EVPs, and we also had the thermal scans and the mm-hmm. all this really cool ghost hunting equipment. I, I so I did I went on a couple of them not too many before I, I, you know, it wasn't that often that we really needed to go, but Mm -hmm. um, it was fascinating to, to be a ghost hunter for a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm, um, I, I do EVPs a lot and um, I actually can talk to my guidance on my, on a recorder where I'll ask a question and hear back on, you know, as long as I'm recording the spirit box or even just a plain EVP without it i'll hear answers to my questions things like that ask i might ask my guidance to explain to me what a dream means or what an out of body if i if i don't can't quite get it with journaling and and connecting maybe give me some more insights and i'll get lots of information as long as i and your ears have to tune in because it takes a long time to actually analyze (laughs) an evp or a spirit box session you're going second by second kind of thing, but I love doing it. I have tons and tons of, of them. Um, so, and also spirit rescue. I have lots of recordings of spirit rescue where people are thanking us or uh, if I do it in a group or talking about the light, peace, um, words like that, that come up. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I realize we can just do it here in our own home. We don't have to go somewhere else. There might be haunted places out there that might need our help, but uh, we can get talk to spirit right here in our own homes. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And we can even, if you, if you feel like there's a somewhere else that needs help, you can do it from home too. <laughs> yeah, totally. I do um, live broadcasts here on um, on my YouTube channel, Spirit Rescue, right here, right here in my own little room. So people sh- people know to how do they they send you uh, information through your YouTube channel and make comments or say, hey, I got a I got a place needs to be cleared out. How do they? Um, so no, you find them. I, no, I do that. Yeah. If, if someone needs, needs a private thing, I do that definitely. But, um, but what we do on the live broadcast is just reach out, uh, myself and another psychic named Mike. And, um, sometimes I, I might have other, but it's usually Mike and I that will, cause he does this also on a regular basis. Well, we'll just reach out. We might have a, um, Usually we have someone who are groups. We like to do groups that we want to focus on suicides, uh, maybe. And we've gone to also slaughterhouses to help animals. Um, we've helped uh, traffic children that were, you know, killed, murdered, that kind of thing. Where we will we'll ask guys to take us to these groups or ask any um, ask our guidance to help us with maybe bringing any suicides in our awareness or bring our awareness to any suicides that might need help or anything like that and then we just do it live on wow camera. yeah that is amazing light work you're doing that takes a real 
strong constitution to mm. be able to do that heavy lifting right there. That's impressive. Good oh. for you. Oh, thank you. Well, I realized during, during my out of body experiences, I'm doing it on the other side too. So, you know, as, as above, so below kind of thing. And, and, you know, Mary, I never thought about doing this until um, as I was doing EVPs, we were talking about EVPs and I started hearing, help me, help, help me. And I realized, oh my gosh, these people need help. And, um, and then that's when I got the intuition, okay, I'm, and this is a never ending job. <laughs> right, anywhere, anytime you go out into the world, uh or even even if you don't go out in the world they just come by uh -huh. but i get spirits come visit me all the time and like i'm looking outside because it's starting to blizzard <laughs> it's it's snow? april and it's blizzarding <laughs> yeah it's snow wow <laughs> anyway but uh so like the spirits well as i get them mostly as i'm going to sleep or waking up or fully dreaming and I will have a spirit step in and give me their story. And um, I usually, even while I'm deep in sleep, I do it so often now, mm -hmm. I, I help deliver them home. I like, yeah. I just have the, do the, bring in the beam, which is the connection. And, you know, I have a whole, a uh, prayer that I wrote with my friends. Actually, my friends wrote most of it. I just use it. And uh, it is uh, just creating the intention that they find their way home. And um, I guess word got out that I could do that. So they keep showing up. <laughs> it does get around. See, you're doing this work too. So kudos. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I did hear, <laughs> once you do it, word does get around. And I even heard on one of my spirit box sessions, actually a couple of times where, when I'm doing a rescue um, or gathering for rescue, because I always hear my a female guide on, on my spirit box sessions. She says, you're very popular here. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. I guess. That's nice validating. Yeah. Good validations. Right? Thanks. Okay yeah so you're right uh word does get around once you start working with spirit yeah <laughs> i love these um conversations um let's talk about a little bit about past lives and maybe they're not really past lives does that make any sense or does am i making any sense there yeah you wrote about i, that I, I am I have a friend that really resists the idea of past lives and I'm trying to, uh, but you know, I have to describe my experience and then also kind of tie it into her understanding, but because both are valid because we are all one soul. We yeah. are all one soul, the one soul that we all are, the one self that we all are. And um at the very core of everything the new universe the heavens hells everything in existence all the multi-dimensions everything we are all one soul that's the final ultimate truth but we can experience an individuation of the one self when that's what we're doing right now is our i'm mary and you're sharon and we have an identity and then there's the, the part of this individuation, which is allowed to, and apparently my experience is multiple lifetimes. And so I think that that's how I can grok it. That's why I can put it into some sense is that I have individuated, this individuation has gone through multiple lifetimes and, and part or some or all of my individuation has at times reintegrated and re-individuated. And so it is 
I think for 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 the the self within Mary was also in my past lives, which was Arthur J. Kahn, Juan Carlos Montoya, uh, Zadik, Pu'o'ua, also like the Egyptian scribe, the, the Celtic priestess, <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Brahmin that I was, and all these other individuations of myself that I remember. And um, and simultaneously, all part of the one self we all are. <laughs> right. Okay. And so, and when we, yeah, that makes, I mean, when we look at past and future, it's, it's we're looking at time as linear. And, but it's way, the way I was, that, how do I put it? Um, the way I have seen it, is that as you said time is cyclical or time is cyclical or experiences are cyclical right and so or the whole the whole <laughs> is here the whole um and so we, as we find these individual or choose to have individuation and individual experiences that um what we consider maybe past lives are um could be um Simultaneous, yeah, simultaneous. But their experiences, experiences on this, um, this circle of uh, experiences, perhaps that are further from the center. Does that make any sense? And as we as we grow and learn, our our personality experience, personal experiences, individuation becomes uh, closer, filled with more light and closer and closer to the center of um the one soul does that make any sense am i making any sense because i see the uh, outer uh, parts of the circle as um more dense and not as not filled with as much light as we move further and further in inward am i making any sense that's a, a beautiful analogy to hold to make it make sense. And I feel like any any model that you mentally create to, to have it make sense is a like a model, like the model never fully expresses the reality right. of, of a what it's trying to illustrate and if it works for you that's perfect mm -hmm. it's totally fine it doesn't the the it's not something that needs to be semantically correct because it's ineffable yeah. there you go there's that word again yeah <laughs> it is i right. think i like that um time itself is a construct that allows focus and so seeing the lifetimes in a construct of time or sequence it just gives you permission to enjoy it that way mm -hmm. because it feels comfortable to have it be in a linear time frame and that's totally cool if you, that's how you want to enjoy it if you want to stack them all up in layers this way and have them simultaneous that's totally cool too if you want to line them up this way i you can do that too it yeah. doesn't matter right if it works i like your spiral and it works for you to have it like that totally excellent yeah thank you I love uh, mind pretzel conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and we need mind pretzel conversations. That's how we grow. That's how we stretch our brain power, right? And create more um, synapsis connections, synaptic yep. connections. 
and like to be able to have deliberate synesthesia where you uh, uh, see a color and feel a texture at the same time or yeah. you know maybe you're experiencing a taste when you see a color but uh, that it isn't have to be just one thing it can mm -hmm. be everything mm -hmm. it, or it can be just one thing <laughs> right. if, you, if that's how you want it <laughs> right because we have free will here and we're we're not going to figure figure it out the whole wholeness of it here with our limited brain capacity unless we you know expand and there is you're right though there is no figuring it out but but i don't know do you, you know what i mean am i making any sense i like i i enjoy the um finding a model that works okay yeah and and I appreciate the comfort and the delight in finding a model that feels very stable and that feels very objective. And, and having the validation of somebody else who, who sees and feels and is riding that same model with you. Yeah, I can connect to it connect in some way on that same vibe that same vibe <laughs> one thing i want to mention too and then and then i'll let you go is oh gosh it's 205 okay was it have you noticed how things um are uh, how do i put it uh, mm, i'm trying to find a, a let me Okay, so as it, what I was trying to say was, and um, hopefully I can articulate this, is I'm noticing that I'm my third eye is is really becoming more active. Where in what I'm envisioning in my third eye, or um, whether it's deliberate or not, but these visions, as I'm communicating, I'm getting more and more pictures rather than words it's coming through pictures and i can sit in my meditations or just throughout my day and envision something and it seems to happen very quickly i'm envisioning uh, seeing seeing the future or manifesting the future or whatever so it, it just seems to be more um as we're moving up as our frequency is moving up things are happening quickly Quick. so yeah that's that's a reflection of how wonderfully high your vibration is. If you're vibrating at a high level, you have instant karma, and that's why you were saying like, uh, if if you like you said you want to be careful about what you envision, so or I, or I was saying deliberate about what you envision, mm -hmm. if you can. I'm like you gonna get what you're sometimes given vision so you're just gonna get what you get but mm -hmm. um if you're trying to visualize a desired outcome yes if you are at a very high vibration those can manifest very quickly and that is a reflection of you have uh, cleansed the vessel very well you've limited eliminated blockages and you're clear about what you you feel it you sense it you you see it and then it tends to happen really quickly also if uh you're very lighthearted about it and playful with it sometimes that helps it to happen very quickly but if you feel like you're struggling and you're really, you know, trying to, and it doesn't happen. That's, that's probably a reflection of a very, uh, a, a lower vibration and, and to attune to a higher vibration, go back to love, go keep going back to a feeling of in your heart of love. And it's however you can do that. There's a lot of different ways to do that yeah absolutely nice and i would say that um the the 
the fact that you're getting visualizations is just a reflection of you personally because everybody's different. Everybody gets it differently. Some people really get it very clearly audiently, like to hear mm -hmm. uh, actual enunciation of voice in their mind's ear <laughs> instead of their mind's eye. <laughs> and uh, But you can get all of it. All of that information can be can be clear for for each each person's gonna get it slightly different. You might get it on all channels, you might get it on one channel, whatever. But when it starts to happen from like you have the thought and then you a couple of seconds later you have the manifestation, then you that's a reflection of you're you're doing very good <laughs> in staying <laughs> in a high vibration. That's awesome. Nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And then there's, I was thinking there's that conundrum. Um, if I'm thinking something or seeing something, am I creating it or am I actually just seeing it happening in the, the frequency and bringing it, you know, and it's just, is it um, prophetic? Is it prophecy or is it manifestation? There you go. Thank you. That's the, yeah. <laughs> I don't know the answer. I know. I don't know. Right? Where does Only it matter? You can say, only you can say because only you you know was it a surprise vision or did you create it and put the pieces together until you saw it yeah. did you your your own did you know internal desire bring it forth into your mind's eye or was it just plopped in there <laughs> yeah yeah, and, and as I think about it and, and and mull it over while we're talking here too and, and, and hearing you, maybe they're both the same thing. Maybe manifestation and prophecy are both the same thing, if that makes any sense with uh, with these types of what that's quick that comes quickly to us, I guess. Yep, I don't know the answer to that yeah, question. Yeah. I'm gonna go with I don't know. I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if we're trying to, if we're manifesting something, I'm just thinking about man, uh, law of attraction, okay. manifestation 101. I'm going on here, but um, when we're trying to manifest something, say we want to manifest a better job or something, whatever, um, a house or something, um, we're already creating that in our mind. So we're creating it in the higher frequencies. And um, so if we dream, if we dream about it that day, and then all of a sudden the house pops up for us that we dreamt about <laughs> or we thought about that morning you know and you see it in your mind's eye or something like that i don't know but um is that prophecy is that manifestation but it's both sometimes <laughs> well uh i would I, I guess i my prophecies are a little more warnings than mm. uh, i want <laughs> you know i'm i don't want them necessarily to happen uh, so sure. I, I, I would say that there are also things that I, I didn't want to happen, or I'm not hoping that they happen. If, if they do happen, I want to figure out, I want to have enough information to change it. So it doesn't happen the way that I saw it. Mm. Like, um, uh, the one that's in the book was, um, getting separated in the park with my nephew mm. and because we had to go we had to go to the bathroom and uh we got separated from everybody and I, I saw that in a dream and then when it came to happen uh whatever the events that reminded me oh I dumped this then I made everybody wait for us and and it, nothing bad happened so I was able to change it right. so I would count that as a prophecy that counts because it was something that I didn't necessarily, I wasn't trying to manifest that. <laughs> yeah. It was enough information that I was able to take action and do it differently. And so it also demonstrated free will. So I think that was powerful in that little lesson. And um, so that counts as a prophecy, you yeah. know, right. but like, if I, like a, after i saw the secret i like oh i want a lexus and i sat and i visualized the lexus 
and events unfolded until I was able to get the exact model that I had envisioned. And now I, I, you know, it's, you know, how old is it now? It's over 20 years old, but <laughs> I, I have it. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing with my car. It didn't so, take a couple uh, oh, months. <laughs> yeah, I I don't remember how, how long it took, but I, I remember how visceral the exercise was because they in the in the secret it says to um you know use all your senses and so i was i i in my visualization of it i felt myself with my foot on the gas pedal and the vibrations of driving it and i was less feeling the cloudiness of the ride and uh, and then when i got it i was really excited to be able to manifest like that was just um <laughs> really validating to get the exact model that i had envisioned and then it felt like what i had envisioned it felt would feel like so that's cool that is very cool mary and, and you know that makes me think uh realize and um that that's another reason one of the many many reasons why we come down to these denser frequencies for to be able to do that to remember to be able to do that because it's exciting when we're in the higher planes which is beautiful 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 we can manifest like that and there's you know it's like oh okay well that's cool we can do that and that's just another experience right but coming in into these frequencies i i'm feeling and getting that it's it's uh it's so rewarding to be able to bring that into these denser frequencies and have that fulfillment does that make any sense am i making any sense with that i think that's yeah. part of the reason why we come here or where it we drop is, down it is a sense of uh heaven on earth yeah it is a, it, it like what i try to remember that feeling uh when in my the most intense part of my experience and i want to bring that into every moment because i don't want to relive it and go back and relive the past i want to bring it to now you know yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> uh it was so powerful i mean in it, it's not a negative power so some people think of power as a, a negative but it was empowering i guess i want to mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. it it made me feel like a creator <laughs> yeah. creative i'll put it in sure. a framework that's more socially acceptable but yes it it helps you to feel like a creator mm -hmm to be able to manifest. Right. Well, it, yeah, and tapping into who we really are, remembering who we really are. Yeah. It's and a good I feeling. It is, it's an amazing feeling. And when it happens, it's it's amazing. It really is. And that's that's what we, that's, and it's not the things that we manifest because we're constantly looking for things to, you know, in this human experience, but it's remembering that we have that ability. And then when it happens, it's like, it's a, it's a high for sure. Yeah, it, it is like, uh, to be clear, to, to, to really focus in on it. It's not the, it's actually not the outcome. It's the experience of the process <laughs> that is the joyous part. Right, right. The outcome, just validates that the experience was joyous you know it's and then it's also nice to get validation from the universe from physicality saying you did it right <laughs> <laughs> totally well i think that's a good place to end thank you mary for being here once more i love talking with you as you can tell we could go on forever so uh thank you once more for being here Thanks for playing. Thanks for <laughs> having me. <laughs> it's a joy. Nice, nice. Thanks for your venue. I wish you all the best in all you do. 
Oh, thank you. And and the same to you too. And oh, let's share your net your, your next book. Okay. My next book, which it, it's I was a little lazy and I just copied the cover. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but it's a real cloud so i thought it was still miraculous yeah, it totally. is called uh love life review journal mm -hmm. it is create uh, the instructions and creating the space for you to journal your life and uh hopefully it helps people to keep on track with the process because life is going to give you some challenges and interruptions but this helps you like okay let me just pick up where i left off and keep going with it and it helps you to um do the review and keep really clear about doing the steps after so you gotta do your life review and then go back and do the clearing and the empathy and the positive ripples after the fact and if you do that if if anybody does that it, it's the wax on and wax off you're going to be building those muscles you're going to be conditioning your soul you're going to be raising your vibration and you're going to see feel and know what miracles feel like nice nice beautiful all right <sighs> And where can people find you? What is your website? My website is marydioma.com. It, I also, it's right now links to the same uh, webpage. And it is also love the transcendent journey.com. Okay. And um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I think that's it. And I have my um, author pages and, uh, but also Amazon has an author. I have an author page on Amazon. So if I, anytime I will publish a new book, it will also go there. I'm going to be speaking in Virginia coming up in June, oh. but uh, yeah, I'm going to be at the ARE, uh, Edgar Casey uh, place in the beginning of june yeah june 4th. oh nice that's awesome. we're gonna actually um it's gonna the people are gonna be able to buy tickets to see uh virtually so i, I will post uh information about that when i okay. get more information on it okay nice on your website you'll have it on your website i'm sure yes awesome that's a i love that very good Okay, well, thank you once more. Thank you, thank you, Mary, for being here. And thank you everyone for watching. Um, love you, love you. Please subscribe also. Please subscribe, please, you know, all that YouTube stuff. Comment, give us your thoughts and, uh, and um, take care. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much, Sharon, for creating a beautiful space for everybody to share. <laughs>